Good morning, Nicole. Can you hear me? Hi, Brittany. Yes, I can. Can you hear me? I sure can. Perfect. Disregard my email. Sorry, I had to reload my page and then it was there. So. Oh, okay. I'll be honest. I really haven't been checking email that much today, so I might have missed it. So I apologize. No, you're fine. Yeah, I just, I just sent it. So. Okay. Um, and so are uh, do you, you want me to share my screen? Yep. I was just going to say, are you the one? Let me make you a co-host here. And I think it's recording us. So um, it is. Um, we'll just have to edit Kirsten, this. We're going to have okay. Kirsten yeah, edit this out once it goes up. Okay, um, perfect. But this one is just on there. Hmm. Do you see my PowerPoint or do you see just my Whova screen? I see your Whova screen. Hmm. Do you have two? Do you have two screens? No, I just have. Let's see, Chrome to. There you go. Now I see it. How about now, Brittany? Okay, yep, perfect. Now I see it. Okay. Okay, um, perfect. And then they are doing the recording, correct? Yeah, I have it here. So I'll just okay. click the link whenever. Okay. Do you want to do me a favor and click it really quick and just make sure that yep. it works for me? Yeah, absolutely. Did you hear it, Brittany? No. Okay. So what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you exit out. I'm going to have you stop sharing your screen. Okay. And then when you do it again, at the bottom, there should be little boxes that you can check saying use computer audio and something else. Click both of those and then start sharing your screen again. Okay, give me just a second. Okay. So I screen shiver. Hi, Patty. Okay, so. Dun -dun. So when I hit the screen, the share screen, mm -hmm. is that where the, is that where the audio button should be? Yep. So, okay. When you, do you have a window that pops up that asks you to choose what screen to share? Yes. Okay. So yeah, you'll click the screen and then at the very bottom, there should be um, like little uh, white boxes that you can click on. Yeah, see, I don't have that. Okay. Um, okay. Can you forward me what you have, and then I will just, I'll drive it yep. today. Okay. Hi, Patty. Can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, or I can at least. Okay, good. And then I joined through Whova. Like it gives you a choice of Whova or Zoom. I picked Whova. I hope that yes. was okay. Yep. Nope. That is perfect. So you can, can you see the session Q and A and the chat and all that wonderful yes. stuff? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Nope. You're good. And, and then I was thinking I wasn't going to use my video because the way my system is set up at home, the, the computer that has the video, what do you call it, camera, and the speaker and all that stuff, it functions kind of just as like the computer and my monitor that I can actually, that's big enough that my little old eyes can see mm -hmm. is 
kind of in between me and the actual computer. Okay, yeah, no, to say, absolutely. So if I turn my video on, all people are gonna see is the back of my computer. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, no, I get it. Mine's placed in a weird spot too. So you like are looking up at my double chin and nose hairs. So yes. <laughs> I get it. Oh my God. I mean, the self-esteem issues created by Zoom meetings are really good. <laughs> worth the whole dissertation. <laughs> yes. Nicole, were you able to send that to me? <clears throat> yeah, I just I just emailed it to you. Okay. Let's see. It looks like it hasn't gone through yet. Give me just a second. Hmm. Brittany, I'm going to send it for my personal email because my it keeps going to my outbox. I don't okay. know if I'm having connection issues or. Okay, nope, that's fine. Okay. Did that come through? Not yet. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, uh, there's Bonnie. Bonnie! Oh my gosh, this has been so stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Bonnie. I am with you. Ugh. Well, you know, I don't like organize ahead of time because there's all too many like rats running around in my brain to like sit down and do that. So I try to do it on the fly and then I get all screwed up. But I think I'm here. Yes. Okay, now we here. just need to oh, we just I need see. to talk Dana in. Do you yep. see Dana? I sure do. I'm bringing her in right now. Okay. All right. Now I'm afraid to click any buttons, um, just, but if we, have, if we have stuff in the chat, will that, because I don't have, I have chat Nicole, on my right. Yep, Nicole and I will monitor that, so okay. don't worry about that. Um, and what's going to happen is in the beginning, Nicole's going to do some housekeeping items. Good morning, Dana, can you hear us before I get too far into it? Dana, I think you're muted. Here we go. Um, hey. so I'm, I'm in, I'm in the, I, don't, I don't, I shouldn't do this full screen, right? Because then I can't see the chat and stuff. Or can Correct. I? Correct. I mean, okay. yes. If you exit out of full screen, you will be able to share the chat. Um, however, um, Nicole will be monitoring the chat. So what she's going to do is she's going to be doing a few um, housekeeping items before we get started. Um, and then I'm going to be quote unquote driving. So I'll be sharing the slides and then we'll play your recording. And then I'm actually going to hang on here. Okay, so can you guys see my screen? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Nicole, since I'm the one sharing my screen, I cannot see 
any of the chat in the Whova app. Um, so I will okay. have that up on my phone, but I'm going to need you to kind of monitor that a little bit for me. Well, and we can monitor the Q and A because since we pre-recorded, we don't really have anything. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If you guys are in there and want to start answering questions and everything, that is great as well. Okay. So has just yeah, the problem. Go ahead. Our, problem video, have... our, our video is seriously 55 minutes long. So there really isn't going to be a lot of Q&A at the end unless right. people want to cut into lunch. Okay. Yeah. You guys are at a nice little point because we don't need to hurt because since we are like sharing platforms and doing multiple sessions on the same platforms, we do have to keep to that hour. Um, but you guys, you're right. You're before lunch. So we do have a little bit of wiggle room with you there. Okay, but I am going to try um, the problem something. I had with the Sorry, I'm going to try something really quick. I want to play this video and make sure that you guys can hear it. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this session for our 2024 Can you guys hear that okay? Excellence Conference. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, now we're back on here. Brittany, I had an issue earlier. Um, yeah, go ahead, Nicole. Okay, sorry. So um, earlier during the um, our keynote presentation, the only way I could see the chat being updated is if I typed something. It would only refresh if I typed something in. So I just kept putting a period. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. I was wondering what you and Angela were doing. And I know Tasha. <laughs> yeah, Tasha had the same problem too. Um. Okay. I. I think with Dana and Patty and Bonnie being able to monitor the chat and the Q&A as well. Um, and then I will do my bit. I literally have two screens, my iPad and my iPhone, guys. I am <laughs> teched out today. So I will do my best <laughs> to monitor as well as I can. Um, but yeah, I think at, at this point, you know, it just, it is what it is. We're gonna do the best that yeah. we can. And that's just what's gonna happen. <laughs> yep. And agree. so as questions come up or something happens in the chat, it will pop into the right side of our screen so we'll be able to see it, right? Yes, and it should okay. even pop up with a little red circle to let you know either you have something in the Q&A or you have something in the chat. Okay. I find chat to be a bit of a hot mess. It, can, Nicole, can you ask folks to put stuff into the session Q&A in lieu of chat? Yeah, yeah, I can, you mean whenever I'm like introducing you? Yeah, because I feel like the problem yeah. with chat is you can't, if you actually want to respond to somebody's thing, by the time you do it, other people have put other stuff in the chat. So you get these questions with answers that are like 10 bubbles down. Yeah. Versus the Q&A yeah. where you can okay. actually reply so to say, the actual. Sure. Yes, yeah, so I'll say if you have specific questions to put them in the session Q&A. And if you're just making a general comment, then to, that can go in the chat. Yep, great. And Nicole, when you're um, going through and kind of doing the housekeeping, if you just want to go ahead, um, because they are going to see kind of behind the scenes when I pull up the video, and just let them know um, that it was pre-recorded mm -hmm. to sort of uh, hopefully minimize any technical issues, um, but that all of our presenters are on live to answer questions. Okay. And then I am in our office in a cube. Can you guys hear any background noise or conversation on my end? 
Nope. Okay. No, I can't hear something. Or something. Like, it almost sounds like writing on a chalkboard. Or something. That, sorry, that was me. I was writing. Oh. <laughs> Nicole with her at home chalkboard. <laughs> I was actually, I was actually using um, a crayon right now because I don't have a, I can't find my pen. So. All right, everybody feeling comfortable, confident, ready to go? Ready to go. Well, as good as we can be. Right. I mean, seriously, we did the hard part two days ago when we recorded. Right, absolutely. Just saying. So why do we feel all anxious now? All right, so we're, at 11, too, it's okay. <laughs> we're at 11.30. So I'm going okay. to go ahead and admit all attendees. And then Nicole, if you wanna just give it like a beat, and get started, and then you can yep. just tell me next slide as we progress through. Okay. Okay, are we ready? Sure. Here we go. Yeah. Good morning, we'll give it just a few seconds before we get started so people can join us. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. So good morning and welcome to the Forum for Excellence um, 2020. My name is Nicole Jerger with the Forum for Excellence Planning Committee. Um, I will be the moderator today for today's session um, along with Brittany Boston, who is with us. So this breakout session is, sorry, Brittany, could you go back one just really quick? Is putting the band back together. Um, and as a reminder, all participants on this session are in listen-only mode. Please post your questions and or comments in the chat box. And actually, if you have a question, please post that in the session Q&A, and any general comments can just go in the chat. Um, this session will be recorded, and the presentation, recording, and any materials presented during today's session will be available on the Whova app throughout the conference. Following the conference, these materials will be available on the Forum for Excellence webpage posted in the chat. Um, I would like to introduce to you our speakers. Um, they are with us today. This was a pre-recorded session um, to minimize technical issues, but like I said, all three are with us today um, to answer questions in the Q&A and to chat. Um, so with that, that is Patty Zuccarello, Bonnie Campbell, and Dana King. And I want to thank them for taking the time to present this. And we will get started. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to this session for our 2020 Forum for Excellence conference. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. Um, this morning, we are joined by Bonnie Campbell, Dana King, and Patty Zuc. Carello, um, and we are going to be listening to them present on putting the band back together again after COVID, even though we are still um, in the midst of COVID. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to you, Bonnie, to get us started. Okay, thank you and welcome. I guess we should be saying good morning, everybody, to um, our presentation, putting the band back together again after COVID. Here's the disclaimer on that. When we decided to um, put this presentation together way back, I don't know, when was it, ladies? February, Mar March, it must have been March. We all figured we would be back together again because COVID would be done. But obviously COVID is still with us. And so we're going to kind of put the band back together again virtually um, for all of you so you can kind of see how we've been um, 
going through our days and getting through things since the last time we all met at the Forum for Excellence in September of 2019. So with that being said, um, I'm Bonnie Campbell. I'm the Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs uh, at Illinois Valley Community College. That means that I get to be the Perkins Coordinator also. So I've been doing that for five years. I just started my fifth year, not at the college. At the college, I've been here for about 30 years almost um, in different capacities. Spent most of my time in healthcare and in nursing, but uh, most recently have been, um, like I said, working with uh, curriculum and assessment and Perkins, and that's how I've met my lovely co-presenters um, in that world. So I'll pass it over to Dana. Hi, my name is Dana King and I am the Dean for Career and Technical Education at Heartland Community College. Um, we have um, most recently uh, become a career and technical education uh, division. So that's exciting for Heartland. And um, this is a, a area that I've been involved with for the last seven years. And our division has basically all of the CTE at Heartland except the health sciences is its own area. Um, and there's a couple of CTE programs that are, are outliers to our department, but I have the, the majority of the CTE programs at Heartland. Patty? And I'm Patty Zuccarello. I'm the Dean for Career and Technical Education at Joliet Junior College. And I'm also the Perkins Administrator for our institution. I've been in higher ed for about 15 years. I started out as faculty, actually as the reading specialist at Prairie State College, and then uh, became an administrator there, worked with Perkins, PIG, back when we had PIG. Um, and then in the last four years, I've been at Joliet Junior College working with their career and technical education program and also their Perkins program. So for today, our agenda really is going to be mostly around these kind of last four bullets. The first bullet will just give you a little more information about our institutions and kind of where we're coming from. And then we're going to each talk about victories, challenges, and the road ahead that we see. Um, as from each of our institutions and our vantage points. And then what we're gonna encourage you to do is to join our merry little band. We think it would be really helpful if we were able to form kind of a network across the state of CTE administrators. We have this kind of support for folks who manage the Perkins grants, but if you're a CTE administrator and you're not related in some way to the Perkins grant, then you don't necessarily have a built-in mechanism for support. So where we're hoping we land by the end of our presentation is that we've convinced you that kind of the fellowship that we have with each other is something that might be worth expanding for the state. So who in the world are we and where in the world are we located? Um, as you can see by this lovely map of the state of Illinois, um, Illinois Valley Community College is right next to Joliet uh, Junior College. Um, we are, our claim to fame is we're the second oldest community college in the state of Illinois. Um, we're located in the heartland. So we're considered rural, not metropolitan. Um, we have a growing contingent of career and technical education programs that um, we have been working with diligently over the last couple of years and um, really work well in this area um, with our, our uh, employers and um, those students who are coming to us looking for different things. And uh, I'm from Heartland and Heartland is the youngest community college in the state of Illinois. Um, so we, we have the second old, the oldest, the second oldest and the youngest here represented <laughs> in our little group. Um, but we are just approaching uh, 30 years in existence. And um, Heartland is um, in Bloomington normal, um, normal um, to be specific. Um, we have major, our major employers are State Farm, Country um, Financial, um, and of course the universities, we have Illinois Wesleyan and Illinois State. We also have Lincoln College in our backyard as well. Um, our college is about, our enrollment is about 5,000 students. So we're not all that big. Um, and of those students, we have a very small CTE population of about, uh, it's hovers somewhere 
usually in the 10% range. So, so not a huge CTE following. We're hoping to really increase that in our area. Um, like I said, major employers are really education, insurance, uh, and um, you know, uh, city municipalities and things like that. Uh, we don't have a huge industry here. Um, we do have a new car company that just moved into uh, the Mitsubishi plant. So Rivian is um, getting up and getting started. So we're hoping to see some more industry here back in Bloomington normal, um, but we're, we're, uh, we're not quite there yet. So that's the makeup of, of our school. And Joliet Junior College, as my colleagues have alluded to, is is known for being the first public junior college in the nation and in the state. We have about 24 feeder high schools and two career centers in our district. We serve about 30,000 students between credit and non-credit. We also have about 55 career tech programs, um, and that's kind of inclusive of certificates and degrees. Most of them are, are degrees. Um, and we also, for Perkins, have somewhere between five and six hundred thousand dollars a year to help support those efforts. Oh, there goes my cat. Did you, did you watch this to see girl cat? <laughs> I knew she'd make an appearance. She just wants one to steal the show. Yeah, that's one thing you can <laughs> get in person. <laughs> yes, I would have totally left the cats at home. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, so this is Girl Cat. The other cats um, both have leg issues, so they really the only one you should be seeing is Girl Cat. We we should the have added a, on the ground. I wish I wish we would have had it added a bullet for Girl Cat. I mean she could have totally added to our presentation. She adds I think she's going to add to our presentation. <laughs> yes. She's over. a local celebrity in Joliet. I just <laughs> for for reasons <laughs> not unlike what you all discussed. It. Yeah. But we digress. Oh, she, see, and she even she, my, she advanced um, us, Pat. She, yes. On Friday afternoon, she likes to delete all my emails. So that there's a free tip. If you're going to email me, don't do it Friday afternoon. I'll never see it. I would like to borrow her then. Can I borrow her so she deletes all of my emails too on really? Friday? Lend her out, Patty. Lend her out. <laughs> I'll just well, drive her around. <laughs> Okay, so we decided that what we, how we could approach it, you know, originally we wanted to do this roundtable discussion and kind of bring people together and talk about, you know, where we were, where we were going, how we had gotten there, who needs some assistance, who needs some, you know, bright ideas or not some bright ideas. And, um, but because we are virtual, we weren't able to kind of do that. So we decided, well, let's talk about since we got together last with the forum, what maybe our victories were, what have our challenges been, and then how we're looking in the terms of the road ahead, where we're going. So um, I kind of, um, I'm gonna start out here, and I think that the overall victory that I feel really good about that we've been able to make really inroads on are the stackable certificates. Um, we started this conversation here at IVCC with our career and technical programs. I think around in early 2018, just saying, hey, we need to be thinking about this. We need to be focusing on taking these great big huge certificates and paring them down. I don't know about any of you, but our certificates basically started as um, AAS degrees and they took the gen eds out and then we got a certificate. So we had these certificates that were 40 hours, 45 hours. Um, and what was happening is that students were getting into them um, and never finishing them because who wants to finish 40 hours of a certificate? But the other side of it was they were going out, they were getting a couple classes and they were going out and they were getting a job. And then some of them were trying to come back, but then they never really were able to attain anything other than a class or two to really prove that they had like jumped a level or learned a new skill, skill, excuse me. So we um, started in CAD and um, we created a basic and advanced certificate and that's been really well um, received by our students and we've kind of moved on to welding we totally re reconfigured our welding program 
um, with all kinds of, of names that I'm not going to bore you with from GMOD to SMOD to MIGTIG and STIC to ADVANCE to BASIC. I mean, we really kind of took them apart and we're kind of still working with ICCB on them to try to make sure that we've got it all in line and it makes sense. But um, we've kind of moved over into healthcare. Our dental assisting program has created um, a basic and advanced office management certificate. That's for those students who kind of get into dental assisting and they decide I don't want to spend the rest of my life in somebody's mouth. But I really kind of like the idea of being in a dental office. So what we did with that one is we created, you know, the first semester of that certificate program, it's a 10 month program, they can complete and get that basic certificate. And then for the advanced, we looked at our business management certificate and took three courses from there and kind of brought it over. So we're trying to feed into business management and create this advanced um, dental office management. So we're still, um, we're going to be doing that for the first time in the spring. Um, we're also kind of working right now on um, electronics and electricity. Again, that was another one of those huge 45 credit hour thing that's so confusing. And we have a new program coordinator who's really trying to streamline things and make it really more effective and more um, logical for students. I think that's what we found with some of these big certificates. Not only did they never complete them, but they never understood what they were trying to get at. Um, it's really opened the door for a lot of great conversation with our employers in the district in terms of what it is they want, what it is they really need. And our new challenge with these stackables is to really now work with our area career centers and our hospitals, or not hospitals, high schools, uh, excuse me, that's the nursing part of me, um, the high schools to try to, to determine that, okay, we have these dual credit courses, but how can we embed um, industry recognized credentials, how can we build that stackable so that they're non duplicative and that sort of thing. So it's really gotten a lot of great conversations started um, in terms of all that. We're going to be looking at um, cybersecurity and building some in there. We're, our criminal justice instructor wanted to do these two tracks and try to figure out, you know, I'm going to have this AAS degree and this AAS degree. And then we decided, let's try some stackable certificates so we can go down the road of social justice and criminology and see where we come up. So it's, it's, been, it's been a victory and it's really um, to the credit of our deans and our program coordinators who have really embraced the idea um, and recognize that it's important. They've listened to employers, they've listened to students. Um, so I, I, it's been something that I'm really proud of us as an institution for being able to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna piggyback off of you a little bit, Bonnie, and, and say that our, um, even though this isn't my victory that I've listed here, that, that Heartland has been undergoing a lot of that same conversation that you guys are doing stackable certificates, streamlining programs, um, and ensuring that things make sense. Um, because like you, I, you know, or like you were saying, you know, it's, it seems like a lot of the programs were built on whatever was happening 20 years ago. Right. Um, and some of the needs have changed. And, um, and you know, we were just talking, um, I was just in a meeting before this meeting, uh, uh, with our video um, instructor who was like, you know, the things that were in our class that were just five, six, seven, eight years old are no longer relevant and we need to update those and we need to update how those certificates are, um, you know, what they're comprised of because it, 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 isn't, was, it isn't what it was when we developed them. So um, we're in the same, we're in the same boat, so to speak, of, mm -hmm. of just trying to shore things up, I think is the best thing. So um, but my, my victory at, at Heartland um, is uh, just that we are doing more online learning in the CTE areas. I think online learning has been a, a great thing for a, across the college in many different areas, but with the CTE courses, it's a little more challenging given that most of our classes run lab sections. And so many of my, this is an unintended positive consequence of COVID. <clears throat> Um, even though I really didn't want to bring COVID up during our presentation, but I, but I am because I, because I, I am considering, have to. I, I have to, because it's our lives now, right? We, we can't escape it. Um, but, but our institution overall has done a huge push with online learning 
um, in, in hiring an executive director of online learning who comes to us with, with extensive um, experience in in just best practices in online learning. So we have the the backbone at the institution already. Um, all of our instructors, if they're full time instructors, have to be certified. We actually have a, a training, a pretty rigorous training program to teach them um, how to teach online. Um, and so uh, we have adjuncts that have gone through it, full time faculty who have gone through it. So we've had some of those things in place. But the but the part of COVID. Um, that has forced CTE faculty to rethink was we had no choice back in March, right? We had to go online. They had to figure out a way to do this. And um, they, they struggled with it a little bit at first, but then they kind of got into it. And uh, we had been talking previously about, um, you know, uh, courses like ne computer networking or digital media um, how do we how do we run some of those online when they needed to have that face to face um, class or they needed to have that hands on piece um, to do the labs and faculty were a little resistant about moving things to be fully online. Once they had to experience it. So once they were forced to experience how to deliver content online and get creative with it, they are finding that they really like it. Um, and that it, it, it's kind of enriching things a little bit. And um, so, for instance, one course that we offer is our technical graphics course. So we, we still do an old school drawing, um, you know, with the, with the boards and the rulers and all of that stuff. Um, and, you know, the instructor's like, well, I can't deliver that online. And, you know, they need to come and, and, and use the tools and have the stuff and I need to be there. And, and so since then, she's like, no, wait a minute. You know, we can loan this equipment out to students. They can do it at home. Um, you know, I can record videos and, and I can meet with them on Zoom. I'm, I'm open to, you know, appointments. And, and so they've really expanded um, what they're doing and how they're doing it. And I just think that this is going to, this is the future of where we're going with instruction, even in CTE, uh, where, where there are those heavy hands-on classes. And so I'm just tickled that I have faculty that are now thinking outside the box mm -hmm. in, in how to deliver um, quality. You know, we just don't want to throw something out there. The last thing we want is for them to watch a YouTube video on something. We, that's not what we want. Um, but for them to really um, embrace online learning for CTE, for lab classes, um, and, and I think it's just exciting to see the, the change in them and that they're really thinking. And the other thing that they has come of that too is that they're talking more with each other as faculty members and they're bouncing ideas off of one another. They, they had done that before, but, but um, you know, with, with Zoom and, um, you know, having to do meetings online and things like that, in, in some cases it's really opened them up. So that's been a fun thing for, for us to see. And I, I, I consider that a victory because I think we're just, going to have to do more of it in the future. And for our victory, I picked the comprehensive local needs assessment, <laughs> which is, <laughs> is I know, <laughs> crazy. Um, I've spent too much time with my dad. Um, but I, I really think the part of that activity that was really meaningful for us was how we went about the employer engagement aspect. So about a year ago when we were, when we were together last, and we were talking about how we were gonna approach the CLNA, I think we had kind of bigger ideas, like we were gonna to have to have these giant meetings with all these people at the table and da, 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 da. And I think the more we thought about it at JJC, the more we realized we already have existing mechanisms that we can use. We just need to do something different with them and use them better and kind of more to their fullest capacity. So what we did for employer engagement was we worked with the advisory boards that we had at the college, and then we basically drafted a five question survey that was stuff that we wanted to know. Like, for example, kind of what Bonnie had referenced before, we have these certificates that are built, some may be slightly over-engineered. So if somebody is starting down a pathway to get a certificate, and then you realize after a handful of classes, they're employable, then are we, are we missing an opportunity to have perhaps a shorter certificate, but are we kind of missing that dialogue with the employers about which pieces and parts of our program are the most meaningful to you? So we had this question where we asked um, for jobs that are new hires at your 
facilities? Are you looking for people who have certificates, AAS degrees, or just some of the courses? And some of the courses was a really strong indicator for us, which I think validated what we had kind of anecdotally experienced, but now it's helping us think a little bit differently about when we make a certificate. And I think we put a lot of energy sometimes into making certificates that are financial aid eligible and have a certain number of hours in it. And we don't necessarily always think about the way to, to just approach it purely from a content and skills perspective. And I think this was kind of just a good way to open that dialogue and kind of have those conversations. Um, we also realized that, it, that these little Google Forms that we were doing with the advisory committees were really important, especially for some of our um, kind of niche programs where the MC data might not really show you, oh, there's a lot of opportunity in this kind of pathway, but we knew we had a strong local relationship that was the reason that program existed in the first place and was specifically feeding these handful of companies in this particular industry. So doing this Google Doc was a way for us to continue to verify the local need, even if the more global data wasn't reflective of that. So I think that was really important. And then we also, um, as another element in that little five question quick and dirty item, we talked about diversity needs at the um, industry level so that folks could tell us if they were struggling to recruit people of color, if they were struggling to recruit women in non-traditional fields, men in non-traditional fields, that kind of thing. So I think like overall, that piece of the CLNA really gave us a better foundation to continue to, to build and innovate and work with employers. And I have to tag into that because if any of you we're at our presentation last year, Patty and I did a presentation called Steal Big, Steal Little. I stole that idea from Patty and I did the same thing with the survey and I'm glad you brought it up because that really helped give us direction for some of those stackables. And, and I'm with you on that whole, the, the idea that every certificate has to be financial aid eligible. You know, it's, a, it's, a, <laughs> it's hard for me to move people off of that, but I think it's important when you look at what's really needed in the community. And a lot of these certificates are part of a bigger picture anyway, so. Yeah, yep, agreed. Okay, we're moving on to challenges. Like we didn't have enough challenges already. So on March 19th, uh, we all sheltered in place. And so we're getting used to that, we're doing okay. And on April 24th, we at IVCC experienced a data breach, a security breach, we were hacked. So when that happened to us, we literally lost all, well, we lost all method of communication with the outside world. So we had no email, we had no files, uh, we had no website. We had no way with communicating, at least in the initial like first 24 hours of communicating with, with anybody. We were texting, we were trying to figure out personal emails, um, faculty trying to talk to students. And like I said, every day, it was like Groundhog Day, the movie. Every day you woke up and it was like you had lived it the day before. Um, so it was really, um, it was difficult and, and we, we lost, we had just flipped over to a new server in January. And um, for whatever reason, um, we lost all of our information on that new server from January to the breach in April. So any files we had created, um, any meeting minutes we had, any data from the CLNA that I had put into the system was lost. So, um, Luckily, I'm very old school and I had sent myself a lot of emails while I was at home and I had printed out a lot of things. So I didn't lose everything, but I lost a lot and I had to recreate a lot. And it was just a lot of time consuming and, and I hated the CLNA again, but then I learned to love it as we went on. Uh, love is a, not, love's a very <laughs> but it really um it opened our eyes to a lot of things you know it pushed our summer session 
We typically have three summer sessions. We ended up having one summer session that started three weeks later. We couldn't enroll for fall until the middle of June. So we had started fall enrollment in April and then we lost everything. And then we had to pick that up again. In spite of all of that though, um, our head count was only down 14% and our credit hour number was only down 9%. So I think that we did a, a great job of trying to rebound from that um, period of time. Um, the other thing that kind of happened, so in the midst of the breach and in the midst of trying to gather data for the CLNA, we got our Perkins allocation. And I open up my Perkins allocation, it's $100,000 less than it was the year before because we had a problem with how our data was turned in. We had new people, and um, but we couldn't prove that the data was wrong because we lost our files, we lost our information. So um, that was a little, ICCB was great. We, we met with Jay Brooks, our IR director, and I mean, they were wonderful, but there was just at that point in time, nothing we can do. The good side of that is in the meantime, uh, we've worked with everybody from financial aid to IT. We discovered what it was that we did, didn't do, and we fixed it. So hopefully next year, we're back to where we were in the previous years. So um, hopefully our allocation will go back up again. But it's been really um, interesting. And it's taken a lot longer for us to recover. You know, we're a smaller institution. We don't have a huge IT department. And so everything that we've had to do, we've had to do with the help of outside agencies and outside consultants. And when you're in the midst of a breach, you have to be very close to the vest. And so we've had, we've had some communication issues. We've had things that just, you know, if we could go back, which we never want to, we would do differently, I think. But I, the important thing is that we're going to plan the future differently in terms of how we're going to, you know, go forward from there. So that's been and continues to be a challenge, even though it was a couple of months ago. So Bonnie, did you, you lost, I mean, they didn't even, they couldn't even recover your data at all. Like it was literally all gone. The, no, ba no backups, no nothing. Uh, there was no, no backup that survived from that January through April. Um, but I've got everything from the past 20 years that I had on file. We did finally recover that. So anything up until December we have, but, um, you know, it, uh, it, it, yeah. <laughs> wow. I, know. I feel like, I feel like Bonnie is showboating a little with her challenge. Like, I don't really know. Yeah, I, 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 kind of like I can compete with that. No, I, I feel like compete with that. I love your challenges. <laughs> I wish I had your challenges. I feel, I feel like we should have just like, just let Bonnie have this entire section yeah, and know. then, you yeah. know, cause there's, there, I, I just think there's so many different facets to that challenge, Bonnie, that I can't even, I, I can't even imagine. Well, you um, don't look back, you look forward and you grow from it. That's about all you can do. Yeah, yeah I, I have a colleague that said that one time he took his entire inbox and just did a shift delete of the whole thing and got rid of it and said, well, if there's anything important, it'll, it'll come back to me. And I, I think of that sometimes and I'm like, I don't know, sometimes wiping everything out and starting over might not be such a bad idea. Not that I wish that's that the, on anybody. That's the girl cat methodology. <laughs> just hit delete, lot, right? Yeah, I save a lot to the cloud now. Yeah, I'm a big cloud fan. Yeah, cloud, yeah the, cloud, the cloud is your friend, so. Yeah. Um, so uh, over at Harlan, we did not have anything nearly that exciting for a challenge, um, but, uh, but I, I listed just a basic project slash initiative overload. And I feel like we had already had a bunch of things in the works before COVID hit um, and then COVID hit. And, and I don't know about the rest of you, but I feel like that now there's just a layer of COVID over everything else that we were doing, you know, prior to that time. Um, so we have uh, many things in the works in, in CTE um, like I talked about before, some of those are just basic programmatic changes, reviewing curriculum, updating outcomes, um, ensuring prerequisites are correct, um, things like that. Um, we're also, um, as a college, working real hard on assessment um, and trying to get our, uh, you know, program. Our, we're doing some uh, essential competency college-wide assessment um, projects. 
but then in CTE, we're also trying to work on some program assessment um, projects. So then that kind of adds into the, the mix. Uh, we have, a, like I said, just basic curriculum changes, um, trying to work with advisory committees. Um, that's a challenge in COVID. Um, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what the best way to do that is, um, but we still need to, to move forward with some of those things. Um, and then on top of that, we also were awarded apprenticeship expansion grant. So we have an apprenticeship program that is, is off and running. And uh, so that's just another, another project that we're working on. We're very excited about that. Um, but, you know, there's, there, it seems that um, the, the good thing is that um, there's a lot of attention being generated surrounding CTE and a lot of these programs and trades and things, um, which is all great. Um, but in my case, we have a very small department, and so we're trying to juggle all of these things at once um, with, with not a lot of um, support in terms of, of just bodies that can do the work. Because um, my faculty can do the work, but they have to teach because I don't have enough faculty to cover all of the sections. So, uh, you know, and, and then on top of that, we can throw in hiring, hiring CTE faculty is another part of the, the project overload of just trying to, to recruit and retain, um, you know, quality faculty in our program. So, uh, you know, there's just a lot going on and it's all good and um, I love it. I thrive on it, but at times it is um, a challenge and it can be exhausting and, um, and, and one of the reasons we, we assembled this group is so that we can lean on each other and get ideas. Um, Bonnie has had, had said things today already that I was like, hey, I, I need to ask her some more about that. And, and Patty, Patty said something earlier too that I was like, hey, you know, we need to have more conversation about that because, because I really think that when we lean on each other and we beg, borrow, and steal from each other that we're all stronger collectively. And then CTE as a field becomes stronger collectively. So. Um, and I, and I f figure why I'm reinvent the wheel because I don't have time to, to think of new things. So if other people have things that are working um, that can ease some of that overload that we're feeling, um, I think that's beneficial to everybody. So um, that's one of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that all of you that are, are listening to this are, are getting out of that. And, and like Patty said earlier, we encourage you to join our band. So. So my challenge, um, it's, it's pretty mundane. It's form fatigue, form exhaustion. I think one of the things I notice with my um, faculty coordinators and department chairs is there's a lot of paperwork that has to get done in higher ed and it all reads like noise. And one of the things I think um, really kind of brought this all to a head between the comprehensive local needs assessment, but then also with the changes to programs of study with the expectation tool, and then now having to do the application. I think faculty were just feeling like this job is becoming way too much about, about the papers and not so much about the students. And one of the things I started to realize too is they were approaching all of these kinds of um, forms as silos. So they would do their, uh, program review at JJC, we do it, a version of it every year that we call our annual program update. And, but it's, it's literally, it's the program review form basically with a couple extra pieces added in, about three extra things. And then they would also, so they would do their um, program review, their APU. We would also have them do what we call critical friends review, where if it's your year for program review, you bring your forms and kind of talk them through with a group of your peers who give you feedback, positive and also um, points to grow on. So folks were doing that. And then I was asking them for information for the comprehensive local needs assessment. And instead of thinking that like the information that I needed was something that was already in their program review or their APU, they were approaching it like it was a whole new task instead of pulling from specific boxes. So then I started working through like a crosswalk so I could figure out, you know, these boxes in your APU or your program review feed these boxes in the CLNA. Um, and then once you kind of start approaching things with like this crosswalk connectivity mindset, you realize all of the forms from ICCB are all connected somehow. So even when we're talking about 
program review or for us APU annual program update. And then when you look at the program of study expectation tool and the program of study application, all of these forms kind of dovetail together. So what what I'm trying to do, at least for us to kind of combat this idea that like each form is a silo, is to give folks kind of this crosswalk so they can see the answers that go in this box and this form. It's, we're talking about the same thing in this box and this form. So these answers should be congruent, if not identical. <laughs> um, and I think that's kind of helped people at least feel like that there is a method to the madness. It's not just madness. And to also realize that the kinds of um, things you want to look for in a program of study are the same kinds of things we're looking at in program review. So that folks are kind of getting that this all, we, it really is all the same song if you just take a minute to look at it. So I think that's been the way that we've been trying to address form exhaustion. And it doesn't work, it doesn't work on every form in higher ed. Um, but in particular, these pieces for CTE, they're clearly congruent. And if you can help your faculty see how the pieces fit, it definitely makes a difference. And I think folks don't feel so worn down. And it also doesn't read like noise anymore. They hear it as a song, not as noise. I'm just going to steal all of that. Okay. I can, I'm happy to share my little crosswalks. Well, they're, they're not pretty, but they're functional. <laughs> and I remember at one point in time, we talked about the crosswalks and, and how important that was. And so in terms of the road ahead and, and what we see, and I don't, you know, how do you look at the road ahead, where we want to get to, what our future challenges are, but programs of study and for us clarifying our programs of study and cleaning it up. But part of the problem we've had is that and, and when you talk about form exhaustion and you talk about the silos, Patty, I, I totally get that. And for me right now, I'm trying to think, and we had a meeting earlier with the Dean of Workforce Development. It's like, how do we get the program coordinators to like really embrace this, not feel like it's something else? Because it's not something else. It's something that they're already doing. It's information that they've already provided, but it's just maybe a little bit different or a little bit more. And um, so we're really trying to work on that and we're going to kind of work backwards, I think. And um, I don't know what that's going to look like, but I know that um, I know that we'll get there. Um, I, I was joking as, as I talk about, you know, not being here next year. God only knows where I'll be. I talk about retiring all the time, but I could never <laughs> leave programs of study just for somebody to pick up behind me because that's just too big of a gig. And um, so I like the idea of like turning it into a song and we'll have to see where that takes us. But, um, you know, working with the, the different forms that ICCB has out there and, and trying to pick them apart and, and again, making it simpler because if we think about our faculty right now, our CTE faculty are so overwhelmed. They are so trying to do things that they never thought they would have to do in the classroom. Um, they're, they're working with smaller groups of students, but they've got more sections. And, and we're with like Dana, we don't have a lot of part-time faculty. We don't have adjuncts coming out of the woodwork. And so we're working people really hard and to try to ask them to do one more thing is, is a daunting task. So trying to figure it out for them, clear it up, clarify it, I think is, is gonna be my, my big thing to do over the next couple of months. And Bonnie, I, I think the other thing, I mean, I feel the same as you about my faculty that, boy, they're just being challenged left and right. And, and not only are they challenged with their content and delivering their content, but they are also available for their students in ways that they weren't used to doing that before. So they're meeting with them via Zoom, they're talking to them on the phone. And the other thing that is an interesting dynamic is that the students have their own issues and, and multi-level issues that they didn't have prior to COVID. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, young students taking care of nieces and nephews and, and, and parents and, and, and all of these things. And so the faculty are hearing that from their students and absorbing some of that um, too. So it's just, a, it's just a very interesting time. Like you said, they're, they're, they're working hard. They are very, they are working really hard. So 
Um, so our, for our road ahead at Heartland, um, you know, I, I put on there solving the scheduling dilemma because part of the challenge that we have is because we have we don't have a high CTE population in terms of numbers of students, we very often are running very low enrollment sections or we have to cancel something because I had to cancel a couple classes because I had one or two students that had signed up for them. Um, so one of the projects that we are starting down the road of, of developing in our industrial technology area is a flexible lab option so that students can be learning um, um, a lot of things maybe online um, on their own and then um, come into the lab and do their lab work at, at their own pace and, and on their own schedule. Um, and so we're just starting to, to embark on discussing this and mapping some of that out. Um, and we're, we're excited about it. Um, the college has made an investment in Amatrol equipment for those classes. Um, and so we, we just now started using that just in regular face-to-face -face classes, but um, we're hoping to really maximize that equipment by doing this flexible lab for those maintenance classes. Um, because some of our struggle is that we are offering classes once a year um, and then it's only on a Tuesday night at six o'clock and you know, John can't make that because he's a second shift worker and there's no way he's ever going to finish his program. So um, we want to make sure that we're able to respond to students needs. And then um, we're also wanting to, to be able to respond to employers needs so that if they said, well, you know, I've, I've got, you know, um, you know, Susie over here and she really could use a hydraulics class, but you only offer that in the spring and it's now August. And, you know, I really can only afford to have her off the shop floor for you know, three weeks, is there a way that you can deliver that? So we're hoping that this is gonna help solve some of our, our scheduling dilemma and, and be able to, to really respond to, you know, like I said, both the student and the employer's needs. So uh, we'll, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna map this all out over the next year or so and, and see where we go with it. And then for our road ahead, sorry, I'm fixated because I totally noticed I, I put a typo in this PowerPoint at my, my own institution is JJC, not JCC. Um, so at JJC, uh, what we're doing for the road ahead is we've organized some faculty into a learning community to work on their programs of study, uh, program of study expectation tool, and then also the application. This actually started probably about, I would say June-ish when we weren't really sure what fall was going to be like and we started thinking if some of the CTE faculty can't make load depending on what state our campus is in um, then we have to come up with some kind of alternative assignment for folks so that they can still get load and we were talking about doing faculty learning communities we've done them in the past at JJC and they've worked pretty well where faculty study particular um, topics or methodologies for a three credit hour release and then they work on it they attend a class they do some online elements or they meet in person and that kind of thing so we started talking about possible faculty learning communities for fall in the event of an event and I said oh I got a good one I'll build one on programs of study because we've got to get this done and this would be an opportunity so we started figuring out what it was going to look like. We decided we would actually have it start um, with the 12 week classes because then that would give us a better sense to see who all was really going to be at load and be okay and who was going to need help and that kind of stuff. So we felt we'd give ourselves a little month buffer at the beginning of the term to kind of get everybody in and settled. And as, as things kind of turned out so far, we only had a handful of people who were below load and um, and some of them decided not to do this. They did other stuff, but we do have one or two people in this uh, learning community that are that are the initial target audience. The other folks are folks who are CTE faculty and coordinators who realize that they need to get this done and they would rather do it in kind of a supportive community instead of trying to figure it out um, more independently. So the way this works is Friday afternoons, 
folks have a, a synchronous class with me and with one of the CT department chairs. And we, we have, it's a two hour block and we have it kind of divided into pieces and parts. So there's a part that's a lecture, a mini lecture about the work they're gonna do for next week. And then the rest of it is folks breaking into small groups. And we do this all in teams, um, sharing their work, basically their homework, where they're writing assurance arguments and pulling together evidence for their program of study application. So, um, they spend about six hours a week between the two hours with us on Friday and then about four hours um, in between working on, you know, looking at data, working with their advisory boards, pulling other information together, whatever we kind of need them to do. They spend about four hours doing that. Um, and then one of the great things actually about this is because it's all virtual, um, our team's meetings are connected to our Canvas core shell but inside the Canvas shell, there's a few readings that we have for people like the CLNA, um, but then we also just have a lot of links built into the syllabus and schedule so that if folks need to go visit, um, like the, some, if they go visit the ICCB um, website, we can just put the link to the exact place on that website that we want them to go visit. So that's been kind of, um, kind of cool about that. I'm trying to think the I think the other thing too is we just started realizing that um, up until now the way we usually did programs of study was I would sit in my office and figure out stuff and when it was time to um, put it into Perkins the next year so I would use their APUs and their program reviews and figure out kind of cobble stuff together and so again the nice thing about that is I know the crosswalk for what goes where um, but the downside is that's not really the spirit of the program of study methodology for assembling it. So I think this is a way better way to approach it. Um, and I don't, we'll see if I'm right. Uh, we're only a week or so, two weeks into it. So it's still a little bit new, but, um, but so far everybody's a little fearful, but mostly pretty excited. And if this works, then hopefully the folks that are in this faculty learning community can then also mentor other folks, um, or I or will just continue this as the model for how we have people do it. So either either of those outcomes, I think, would be good. So the Fellowship of Thievery. This is kind of an inside joke that we're we're inviting you all to join us. Really. Um, uh, so about a year ago, Bonnie and I noticed that, um, well, actually more than a year ago, I'd say Bonnie, we noticed that we, we share ideas kind of in a less formal, formal version than we've been sharing today. Um, and then usually what happens is we hear something or see something and we go back to our institution and I say like, hey, at IVCC, here's what they're doing. We could do kind of an iteration of it and it might look like this. And then Bonnie would go back to her school and say, hey, at JJC, they're doing this. We can maybe do a version that would look like this. So we started realizing over time that we were really stealing a lot from each other. And we're two organizations where if you look at us on the surface, you think they don't really have that much in common because you know it's sort of David and Goliath in terms of the size of our organizations. And But I think what we realized over time is part of what we enjoyed as much as stealing ideas from each other was just the fellowship of having these conversations. So over time, Bonnie and I have been talking about it. Then we um, pulled Dana into our merry little band. band, of band. <laughs> yeah, about two years ago. Um, what was I thinking of joining this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's what we what we're hoping we can encourage others of you to do is to join our merry little band and engage in the fellowship of thievery. And, um, and we're not really sure, I don't think, what exact format it would take other than we thought it would be a good idea if we would have like an identified um, session at the forum every year, an identified session at um, ICCCA every year, although like there, we're not gonna have an ICCCA conference in November, so maybe we could do something um, just even just like a Teams meeting or a Zoom or something just to kind of have some fellowship. And then um, in the spring, early spring, when IACTE has their meeting usually in February, am I right? Yep, yep, yep. Um, 
then we could have another session there. So we would at least kind of have these three touch points each um, year and then maybe have some other stuff in between. So that's kind of what we're hoping. And and one of the other things too, if you if you happen to be on my mailing list from a month or two ago, because um, I'm the um, I'm on the board of IACT and um, also the membership chair there. Um, IACT really is trying. IACT generally has always been more of a K-12 organization or um, or secondary organization, a little more geared toward faculty and administrators there, but. They really are wanting um, more post-secondary involvement as well. So, um, you know, I was trying to to generate, and and Patty and Bonnie and I have had discussions on where does something like where does a formalized group live? You know, would it live with IACT? Would it live with IEEE? Um, you know, where could we put something formal? Um, but I think the first step in doing that is really to just get us informally talking on a regular basis so that we can start to to form some sort of a group. Um, and and honestly, um, like Patty said, it, it really is just about being able to share ideas. Um, I know that I was at a, a workshop not too long ago um, and Bobby from Parkland was there and sharing some idea that she had. And I was like, wait a minute, I need to know more about that because if it's working for you, Again, it may not work in the same form, but at least I have an idea of where to start. Um, and some of us, um, you know, just don't know what all the possibilities are. Um, and some of your institutions, as in my case, have been around a lot longer than mine has and, and have more trial and error. So um, we just really wanna try to get more people to, to join the band um, and go on the road with us so that um, we, can, we can just be stronger. You know, and I think through all of this that that's happened um, the last couple of months, the rock that I've been able to hold on to has been people like Patty and Dana, because when when you really don't know which way to turn and nobody really everybody's kind of sinking in the same ship, you can reach out to your friends someplace else and they can say, yeah, we're sinking too, but we're going down with you. You know, I mean, I really, I've appreciated that over the last couple of months, if that makes any sense whatsoever, but. Um, yeah, it, it, there is something to that, at least, you know, uh, keeping your sanity and, and, and the other thing that I think is important is that at, at our institutions, um, you know, CTE is kind of its own um, special bird and um, there's a lot of nuances to it that a lot of my other dean colleagues may or may not understand and and so i think it's just been helpful for me with you know bonnie and patty to have somebody that i can turn to that if you say clna or you say perkins and and or you say you know programs of study they know exactly what you're talking about and they know exactly how to help you so um that has been a a, a godsend or we don't know the answer and then we just tell you, yeah, no, we don't know the answer. The answer. Which is okay too. Which, Which is has okay happened too. on more than one occasion. Misery loves company. Yes. 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 Sorry. So here's, I think the, the next way to handle this would be if you're interested in joining the band, here are our email addresses. Pick one of us and send us an email saying that you're interested in joining the band. And then we'll start to get a list or a listserv together and then we can kind of go from there. I really hope that people put, I wanna join the band in the subject line so that I, I see that pop in my, my 700 inbox, email inbox, it'll make me laugh. And that'll make me smile, so yes, I agree. Specify an instrument, <laughs> tambourine, cowbell. <laughs> Clave. We all need cowbells. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then I think next we'll have some questions and answers um, via the Hoopa app. Yeah, I believe so. So we will get right into that. Thank you so much, Bonnie, Dana, and Patty for presenting this to us today. And we will now start the Q&A. All right, while we get these slides put up, um, we do only have three minutes left, but we do still have those three minutes. So if you have any questions, please put them in the session Q&A. Um, and like they said, their emails were attached there. 
I see a couple people have put in the comments or the chat that they would like to um, join the band. So hopefully you guys see that in the chat. Um, also, please make sure that you uh, provide feedback on this session in the Whova app. Um, if you, yes, if there, you should see the button here um, where you can rate session. Obviously, you can't, you can't click on this specific button, but once you are out of this meeting, you will see that rate session. Um, and like we said, please go in and make that uh, those comments. And we will open it up for any questions via the session Q&A or chat for the next two minutes. Yes, and Bonnie, Patty, Dana, any closing comments before we move on to our lunch break here? I think we'd just like to thank everybody who came to our session today. And we really do hope to hear from you. We hope this is just the first opportunity we get to talk together and not the last. Yeah, and I would agree with Patty on that. I hope that, you know, we, it, it's a different venue than we thought we were going to be doing, you know, six months ago, but um, hopefully you got the message. And, and again, I think that our relationships have been so critical to me in trying to pull this thing together at Perkins. And it's great to have people to bounce ideas off of and, and don't underestimate the power of that. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much. We are hitting right at 1230. Um, and so we will be having a lunch break from 1230 to 115. Our next sessions will begin at 115. Um, and I am presenting, this is Brittany Boston, I'm presenting on some pedagogical training model modules for CTE. So I'm going to give myself a little plug for you guys to come check that out. Um, otherwise, take some time, eat some lunch, you know, rest up a little bit and then join us back on the Whova app at 115. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Brittany. Thanks, Brittany. Thanks, Brittany. Thanks, Bonnie. Thanks, Dana. <laughs> Thank you, guys. See you later.